Keith Haring was an American artist that was born in Pennsylvania in 1958. He was introduced to art at a very young age by his father, who was an engineer and an amateur cartoonist. Keith loved to use white chalk and create artworks in New York's local subway stations. This is how he was discovered. His artwork is still on many murals throughout New York. Its childlike style is both unique and catching to the eye and brings people from all over to see. Keith Haring believed creativity in children is what we need in society. Keith quoted, children know something that most people have forgotten. Sadly, Keith passed away in 1990, but his art has left lasting impressions. So today we need our paint, ruler, and markers. Let's get started. Hi everyone. So today we're talking about Keith Haring. And today our art project is about his style of painting. So he did a lot of mural work and he did a lot of very simple designs. So what we're gonna do is, I guess the only thing I'd like to call them is maybe like the party people, is how I look at it. And we're going to be creating those today. So I wanted to show you too that he usually uses very bright, intense colors. So you can use your color wheel colors, that is bright enough, but today I decided to use pink and blue. And you know what, maybe the one I make this time will be my primary colors or my color wheel colors. So, we're gonna start creating this scene right here. So you don't feel like you have to do both figures. You can definitely do one or the other, or you could do both, or you could do a whole bunch more. They're kind of addictive. You get making one and you're gonna make more and more and more. You'll probably be doodling these lots. Okay, so we're gonna look here. And on the one I have here, I do have the ground and for that I have a ruler. And I wanna show you how to create these shapes of people. So of course, everyone's are gonna look a little bit different. But what I do is I start off with a stick person. So if we look here, here's the head and the body and the legs and the arms and the hands. So we're gonna try to create that. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna create the stick person. Let's don't make this difficult. Remember I say always make things easy. So we're gonna create the shapes. So this guy's maybe gonna be a bit smaller than the one on the example, but I'm going to make a circle for the head. Then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna create the body or the torso. And you know what I'm going to do is, I always like doing this with my stick people, which might be a little bit different, is I make them shoulders and hips. Because then it makes it easier for the next part of the drawing, but I'll show you that later. So I'm gonna kinda go in and we're gonna create stick people arms, like put his hands in the air like he's dancing. When Keith Haring was making his murals, he did a lot of these shapes of people. So a lot of people said that it looked very childlike, but he said that children are the most creative people in the world, and I would have to agree with that. He said he always wanted to be older with a child's brain. So he said he always thought of his art like a 12 year old would. And I think that's kind of neat. So we've got the head, the shoulders, the hips. So we're just drawing a straight line just to kind of show how that area kind of comes out, how the shoulders would be and how the hips would be. And then we're gonna do the arms and the legs coming out of the sides of the hips and the shoulders. So the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna start outlining it. So we're just gonna draw a shape 
around the shape. So where we come to the shoulders, that really just goes into the torso, into the legs. We just, so his feet are kind of like, they're dancing. And it's not gonna be perfect. I'm gonna go in with my eraser. Actually, I'm gonna like this. I'm gonna go in with my eraser and I'm gonna clean up my lines. And I'm also gonna clean up where I might wanna change my picture. So I'm drawing this quite dark so you can see it, but I would suggest you use your pencil and just kind of lightly go around so you can change it up a whole bunch. And if you already have it on dark, don't worry about it. Remember, you can just paint over it more. So I'm just going around and I'm working on just a simple shape all the way around. I'm not making it difficult at all. So his kind of bun hands. And we're gonna wanna go in and kind of tidy up our drawing a little bit. So into the neck, and into the other arm. So I'm gonna go in with my eraser. And I took this one from my son's pencil box because I can't find any of mine right now. I'm just going to erase the lines. The lines is what helps me create the shape, but I don't need them afterwards. So I'm gonna erase them all. And then I'm gonna kind of look, this leg might seem, a, actually, I like that one a bit better than this. This one's like dipped down too much. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna just clean it up. And every person you do is gonna look different. And that is okay. And you might find you wanna make things thinner or bigger or more even on each side. So I suggest you just pause the video if you're working on this guy and just see what you can create. See how you can put him together and have the proportions that you like. Okay. So we're gonna go just like that. I kind of like that. So the next party guy that I'm gonna do is this one. And if you want, and you just wanna do a few of these guys that are jumping up and down, feel free. This is gonna look, everyone's is gonna look different. But I wanna show you how we can create our stick guys and put them together so they're in a different kind of shape, so they're in a different pose. So this one's kind of, he's bending down a little bit, maybe jumping, he's got his arm up in the air because he's dancing. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to do a circle for the head. Remember we do the shoulders. So I'm going to look and I'm going to say, okay, about here. And I'm going to draw on this because this is an example one. And I'm going to look right like that. So these are going to be my shoulders. Like this. And I'm going to use my head, right? And I'm gonna come in with my body, but it's gonna have a curve to it. Kind of all the way down, just like this. And then we're gonna have the hips, right? So the shoulders and the hips and the torso. And then we can go in and start creating the arms and the legs. We're gonna try that. I'm gonna kind of leave it out so you can see it. So I'm gonna go in just like mine I have here and I'm gonna kind of have an angled line where shoulders are gonna be. And then I'm gonna come down with his torso, how it's gonna be kind of like curved, right? Almost like I'm creating the letter J, kind of. Okay, so I'm gonna fix that up. And then I'm gonna look and say, okay, if his hips are here, his, his sorry, if his shoulders are here, his hips are gonna be about there too. And then we're gonna create, this arm's gonna go down, and his hand's gonna kinda come out like he's dancing. And then this one comes across where his elbow is up and a hand. So if this gets a little difficult and you're like, I don't wanna do this, I want you to do this one again. Or just start working on 
Just get this one as perfect as you can. This is just making it a little more complicated for the people that would like to try it. So then where our hips are, we're going to create the line of where his legs are going to be. And they're going to be curved all the way down. And I want you to know when something is kind of, when a pose is strange, but the person is upright, what it means is they have to have a leg that is, is going to be kind of on the ground. And the reasoning why is it makes it proportion because if you had these two legs that are going out like this, that wouldn't be very proportioned. Like that wouldn't be possible to probably do unless you were a major gymnast. So just kind of look at it that way that when he puts his legs down, they're going to be down on the ground. But being creative, we know that too, that we can change whatever we want. So if you do, you go for it. Okay, we all create differently. So I'm gonna go around just like I did the other one, right? We're gonna go around the arm and the hand up to the body. Remember, we're gonna be able to change this. He's kind of like in a little bit of seated, stooped posture, I guess, is the only way to put it. And I'm gonna create his legs and his feet. So I'm going to go all the way around. I think I'm going to make that a little bit bigger, his leg. Then this will be his other leg, and that's going to come kind of come out like that too. Right? Perfect, just like that. And the cool thing is, is we've all kind of, we've kind of planned it out with our stick man. And that's all you have to do. It doesn't have to be perfect, and you don't have to use your stick man exactly like you can change things up, but it kind of gives you an idea of like the shape or the pose that your person is making. And planning things out beforehand can sometimes make things a little bit easier in the end, but it doesn't mean it's not changeable. Okay, perfect, just like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get rid of these lines here and just so you guys know you might hear my puppies out and about today usually I try to put them in the other room but I left them out they're kind of tired this evening so I'm hoping that they oh I'm hearing one of them now oh that's not a puppy that's a Zach hi Zach I try not to make a noise oh you're doing so good He's coming to get need for some scissors for, for my show and tell tomorrow. Okay. But you gotta take them. You just take he's making an art project to take to show and tell. It's not an art project. Okay. I wanna make some animals like like my friend Thea made. That's cool. Okay. For me. So there we go. Just like this. We're gonna create that shape. There's my party guys. So I want your party guys to go to look whatever way you like. And the one neat thing is, is if you go through some of your books, oh, Zach was stealing, I guess, paper out of the printer, so it's making a little bit of noise. <laughs> there, it's quiet now. So, go through your picture books, go through a magazine, see what different poses people are, are in and see what you can do. See if you can create a stick man on them to see how you could figure out how to draw the shape. So we're gonna start with shapes like this. So I suggest you pause the video, you keep working on your shapes. So you might come back in, an, in a couple minutes or maybe an hour or two if you need to come up with different ways you want your party people. So, so pause the video, get all set up, and then come back with the paint colors you'd like. And like I said, he uses usually very bright colors. So colors that you'd find kind of on your color wheel. So you can use that or you can pick whatever colors you want. Cause like I said, when you create, it is up to you what your finished project is going to look like. So I'll meet you back here with some paints in just a moment. Okay, so I'm back and we're gonna start painting. So I've got all my paint stuff here. 
And I'm gonna start with my background color of yellow. If you notice too, I used a marker, and you can also use paint, to outline your figures, but that's gonna come at the very end. Sometimes you might decide to do the outline first and then fill it in, and then just kind of touch it up at the end too. So there's two different ways you can go about it, but I'm gonna do mine at the end. So I'm gonna do my background color yellow. So I've got some fun yellow here. Put that on my tray. I'm gonna get my brush out. Remember, acrylic paint can dry really quickly. So we've got our water and our paper towel. So we can add that to it. And I've got some pencil or eraser marks. So I'm gonna go in with my brush and actually, Look behind me here. I hope I don't kick my camera. I'm going to try really hard to be good. And I'm going to get one of my big brushes. This is my one big brush I use on a lot of my landscapes. So remember I said that you can use a big brush in areas that you don't have to have too much control over going over some of your lines. So I'm going to do that first. Okay. And don't worry if you go over some of your lines a little bit. I'm not gonna go over all of them because I'll go in with a smaller brush with the yellow. But this is how I'm gonna do it. It's a bigger brush. Just makes things a lot quicker. And you'll notice too, the brush marks can be a lot more even too. Like it doesn't look like you've just been layering paint on top of paint with a little brush because sometimes you get more of a patchy look that way. But sometimes you'll find too, is you'll end up having to use more paint with a bigger brush, but it works out really well. Okay, so I put in lots of stuff with a bigger brush and I'm gonna go in with my little brush. And the only way to figure out which brushes you like is by experimenting and trying different ones and seeing what works for you. Because what works for me doesn't not necessarily work for somebody else and how they paint. The thing is to find your own style and the, and the ways that you like to paint. Perfect. I love this bright yellow. I love the colors that, um, that this artist used to use. And a lot of his murals are still up, so you can actually go see them there in the States. And that's definitely on my bucket list. That's one of the things I would like to go in and see. And as I mentioned before, he actually started off doing mostly black and white work. So he used to ride the subway in New York City and where there wasn't advertisements, where the advertisements needed to be covered up and they're waiting for the new ones to come in, was black paper. So he went and got white chalk and he would ride around on the subway with this chalk and he'd stop at each black piece of black paper for the advertisements and he would draw his pictures in there. And that is actually how he got discovered. He said he liked bringing art to the public. So you didn't have to go out and see it in a gallery, but you could see it just in your everyday walking around or riding the subway. I'll just work through here. So I think I'm gonna try making my party people. I'm gonna make one of them blue, like on my example, because I really like that color. I think I'm gonna do a brighter blue though this time. Not so light. If you notice that I do have a pencil kind of line in here, but what I'll do is I'll just go in again with like a second coat to cover that up. Like I've said before, everything is fixable in art. So if you don't like something, you can definitely just keep working on it and keep painting. That's sometimes how you get your best work. Okay, here we go. I think Zach is listening to a Disney show because I'm listening to lots of Disney music right now. You might be able to hear a little bit. 
been so good letting me do a video once a week and he does really well. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little bit more yellow. But I'm getting into one of these bigger areas again after I kind of go around this this little small area and I'm gonna use my big brush again. So give it a try. Get out your different brushes and see what it does when you're trying to paint like a big area. And each one of you is gonna find different brush works the best. And that's okay. Okay, let's keep going. And I'm so excited next month's watercolor month. I've been waiting to do watercolor in the spring because I figured we could do some really nice landscapes and some pictures and painting softer kind of things with the watercolors and it's spring is like the perfect time for that because like I've said before in a couple other videos probably to you is that watercolor is really easy to take with you you just need a little cup of water and that usually can go in a little bag with your brushes and your watercolor paper and you can travel with it so if you go on a camping trip I'm going to show you how to do some landscapes going to be a lot of fun and then if you get bored in the car maybe you could find a way to have your paint set up there and keep yourself busy while you're on your way to your vacations and your adventures summer adventures I'm hoping that we're going to be able to get away and go to the lake that's what I'm hoping or even the mountains for a couple days that's my hope I want to go and get lots of pictures for my landscape paintings because that's what I do the most of because I love prairies and mountains and I love landscapes those are my favorite things to paint here we go so if you guys have any cool places and some pictures send them my way I'm always looking for ideas okay oh I guess I did just my small brush here I wasn't even thinking I got talking, that's what happens. Okay, there we go. So, I'm gonna clean up my brush really, really well. And I got this amazing blue that I just got. Ooh, I love getting new tubes of paint. I'm gonna show that to you, isn't that pretty? And it's so bright, so usually, if I would use that in one of my paintings, I'd have to dull it down. But with this project, he used all sorts of bright colors, and I love that about his paintings. It really brings everything to life, doesn't it? Isn't that beautiful? So I'm gonna go in and I'm doing the very edges because it's kind of detail work in there, but I'm gonna use my bigger brush. And I do have a line here. You might wanna darken that up maybe a little bit so you can see it through the paint where his legs are. Kind of overlapping because we're gonna do that for our outline. So that will be part of our outline part at the very end. But for right now, it's just the painting. So I'm gonna keep going through. Paint away and feel free to pause the video. Okay. There we go. And you can even fast forward it too. If you're done something quicker, you can go in and just fast forward. There we go. Oh, this is lots of fun. I think I'm gonna make the other guy orange. I'm really not too much of a red fan, which is bad because so many people in my family love the color red. And I just, I don't use it in many things, to be honest, unless I alter the color. But we all have favorite colors and that's just not one of mine. So, but I like orange, I love orange. So when I wanna do something really bright, I go with orange, where most people will go with red. There we go. But we all just have those preferences where we love a certain color and another color we might just not get as much. Okay. Gonna go into the legs. And all we're doing here is experimenting with bright colors. Every time you paint, even if you're a little bit bored and you're like, why are we doing things this way? Is we are learning to experiment with different kinds of color palettes and how different colors work together. 
We're learning brush skills every time we put paint down. So all these things are gonna make you a better artist. So just have fun with the process and creating something. You know you're learning so much, which is amazing. So I am using my cardstock like I like to do because I could use canvases, but I like to use these papers in my collages later. So you'll notice it bubbles a little bit, but when it dries, I find with acrylic and cardstock that the paper really, it kind of tones down a bit and those bubbles kind of go away. But next month, we're not gonna wanna use cardstock and watercolor because watercolor needs a type of paper, so watercolor paper, and it absorbs way more liquid. So that's the reason for the different kinds of paper. So I find cardstock, I love it for acrylic, but not so much with watercolor, but that's okay. I've tried it before and I have a few pieces that are on it, but I just learned it doesn't work quite as well. Okay, I'm just gonna go through and paint his hand up. Perfect, just like that. Okay, I might have to do a second coat on him, but I'm not quite sure. So with the next guy, I like I was saying, I'm gonna find my orange and I'm gonna start filling that one in. But instead of you sitting and watching me paint, which can probably be quite boring when you're probably already ready to go to the next section, is I'm gonna just show you the first couple brush strokes in this to show you the color I'm doing so bright okay and I'm going to turn the camera off but what we're gonna work on well I turn the camera off is I'm gonna paint this guy and I'm going to paint the ground green I don't you want you to worry about any different shapes or anything so just paint this guy and paint your ground whatever color you'd like and I'll be right back so I'm back and we're gonna start working on the outlines. So if you look, the outlines are quite thick. So you can see some of my lines here, but I know that and I'm gonna cover them up. So, and we're also gonna do some really cool, like little just design work. So we're gonna get started. I have noticed my painting's still a tiny bit wet, so I'm gonna stay away from the wet areas until they dry and I know they'll dry while I'm working on this. So what I'm gonna do first is actually, I'm gonna work on this orange guy. He seems like he's quite dry. So I'm gonna go in with my marker and you can go in with a brush and paint. It's totally up to you. I like when I use my marker and I kind of turn it a bit on its side, I can get a bit of a thicker line and I can add a little bit to, to it. And I just work, remember how I said, move your painting around so you can work on it and not have to reach or and it keeps your lines steadier. Okay, just like that. So, if we look, we're just gonna work all the way around. There. Hoping I'm not leaning over too much so you can't see what I'm doing, but sometimes hard because I have my camera up on a tripod so with a light so you can see. So I do a lot of my filming in the evening. And what's in the evening, I definitely need a nice bright light so you can see what I'm working on. Here we go all the way around or bigger, just like the artist we're learning about this week. Isn't it amazing that he literally would do these, these paintings on huge sides of buildings? So like they were gigantic, like these figures are bigger than even a person. One of the amazing things about him is he would just draw it. A lot of people that do murals, so when you do mural work, you have to do a lot of, a lot of preparation, a lot of planning, and he didn't. He just went and like he said, he started with his first line and it just kind of came to him how to paint it. I find that amazing. 
Some of my paintings work that way, but if I was working on a big, huge mural, I don't know if I could, if I could do that or not, but we have a definite talent. So some of my colors, if you look, are different than the ones I used on my example. I think I would have gone to maybe a lighter green if I was doing it over again, but I do, I kind of played around with some different colors this time. And you never know if you're gonna like something or not like something until you're done. So I'm just showing you right now that sometimes you can go, well, I put these two together again, but maybe not these. Or maybe I would do a lighter green on the ground. So I'm gonna work on the ground. I'm gonna do a straight, thick line. Because my blue guy, he is still drying. I can see it. I love these new paints I just got, but they definitely take longer to dry. But that's one thing you get to know, but the pigment. So the pigment is the color in it. It's just amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna start working on this blue guy. I do know it's kind of wet still in the arm and in this leg, so I'm gonna leave that part to the very end. I can work on this. Look at them dance away. These mine are dancing. And if you look at this artist's work, you're going to notice too, a lot of the objects that he draws are like computers, television sets, like big television sets, not like the ones that we have now. And it's because of the generation that he grew up in is he drew the things that he was interested in as a kid. So that was like the TVs he's got flying saucers, dogs, things like that. Things that he was interested in. And I find it very in neat that he uses shape and color. Like he's not, things aren't very detailed, right? He just, he lets your brain kind of fill everything in. So I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna do these cool lines. And it's kind of showing how he's dancing. Hi, Zach. Oh, Zach would like me to show you something. So he was working on animals tonight. So we have- uh, Animal, animal, animals. animals, paper, yeah. toys. Paper, toys. So we've got uh, a snake, we got a stingray, we've got- Okay, I'll, oh. I'll tell them. Oh, what is the this? Whale the whale I made. My friend Thea made the wolf. Uh -huh. It's amazing. I, ma I made the stingray and I made her pet snake, but they released it and it was a garter snake. It was a garter snake. So I'm going to give you these, buddy, and Thank I will you. be with you in probably about five minutes, okay? Love you. Love you. Go visit dad. <laughs> so in our house, we do a lot of crafts. We make things all the time. This winter we had origami crane wind chimes for people. So we always try to make different things. And things we can find. So our origami cranes, a lot of our paper we used was paper that we found in different magazines or old books. Okay, this guy's dancing away. So I'm just kind of going through and I'm seeing, okay, if he was dancing away, where would I put the movement lines? Because that's what I think we're doing. Creating a party. Actually, this is the fun part. Can't really go wrong with it, can you? Perfect. Okay, this guy, of course, he needs movement lines around his elbows. Maybe up here. By his hands. He's boogieing. And you know what would be really cool? And here's just an idea is Next time I did this, I might use music notes and I might put music notes. So give it a try if you want to. Okay, you could even draw a radio. You could draw lots of stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and then if you look, one of his paintings I saw, I really like, he just uses plain shapes for design. So I just did these little mini, they're kind of rectangle-y or 
ovals and I just randomly draw them in. And like I said, you can use a marker like I'm doing or you can use paint. One other cool way to retry this painting is do it all in black and white. So if you took a black piece of paper, construction paper, and you drew this whole thing out in white, white outlines, and didn't color the insides in, that would look amazing. I think we might actually try that with another art project. It's just using black and white. There's actually some artists and that's the only colors they use, black and white. There we go, so we're just going through making our cool ovals. So please send in the pictures of the paintings you did. I notice a lot of people haven't been kind of putting into the Facebook group. So I'm coming up with some different ideas that can get us more kind of involved. Maybe we won't have the group anymore, but maybe have a featured artist once every couple of weeks on the actual page. But I am going to send your parents some information and we're gonna get it all figured out. Okay, I'm gonna do this right here because I feel like that piece is needing something. Lots of music and dancing. So thanks so much, you guys. I had so much fun today. I love this artist and I hope you learned a lot. So please let me know what you think of the class and I'll talk to you next week.